Using the following year-end information, calculate the current ratio and the asset ratio. All right, so we're going to need the current assets and current liabilities as well as quick asset assets or asset assets. So let's calculate that first. I'm going to say current assets. And we have to decide of these which ones, of course, are current. And of course, cash is current. Uh, Short-term receivables is current. Account receivables is current. Inventory is current as well as prepaid expenses. So they gave us all these current assets. Things that would not be current would be if they gave us something like property, plant, and equipment. So I'm just gonna put those here. I'm gonna bring those numbers down. 38, 6, 9,000, 40,000, and 2, 4. All right, and 17, 4. And so the total then would be here. I'm gonna go and sum that up. I'm gonna underline, home tab, font group, and underline. And just add those numbers up, those numbers adding up to the sum equals the sum of this plus this plus this plus this plus this, giving current assets of uh, 345. Now let's do current liabilities. So current liabilities then would be the, just the payable and the other current liabilities. So those are the current liabilities. Long-term liabilities would be like long-term notes and stuff like that. So they didn't give us any of those, so we're just gonna say, all right, so we got the 22, three, and if we sum that up, underline total, the total current liabilities then would be the sum of those. And so if we were to calculate then the current uh, asset ratio, we would just take the current assets divided by the current liabilities. So that's gonna be equal to the current assets, this 345,000 divided by, divided by the current liabilities 1095. And so that's not quite three because we need to add some decimals. We do that by going to the home tab, numbers and increasing the decimals 3.15. It's a little bit longer than that, but we're gonna round it to 3.15, which Excel will do automatically like so. Okay, so then the, the quick ratio or the acid test ratio is the next one we're going to have. So I'm going to, so they call it the acid test ratio. And it's a similar ratio, but it's going to be more restrictive in terms of the assets, meaning it's going to include cash. Uh, well, let's just do the, the acid assets, acid assets or quick assets. That's the thing that differs. So we're going to say that the uh, current assets are going to be more restricted. We're going to have cash, we're going to have short-term receivable, we're going to have accounts receivable, but we're not going to have inventory and we're not going to have prepaid expenses. So I'm going to copy these and say these are the more restricted assets in our ratio that we will then calculate. And so we're going to sum those up. Those are our asset or quick assets. And then we're going to have the, uh, what is it, acid ratio acid let's see. ratio that's good enough all right and that's going to be the same it's going to be the same current liabilities but we're going to have the current or quick assets with the acid assets divided by the current liabilities so that will give us one we're going to go up to the home tab we're going to go to the numbers and we will add the decimals on that so note that, of course, the current ratio is always going to be higher, and that's because we're trying to see how, how many times we could pay the liabilities off with the current assets. But uh, the quick assets are going to be um, more kind of restricted, and that's going to be more, I guess, conservative in that uh, we're going to restrict the assets to things that are closer to cash, more liquid assets. Next one says that a company's uh, current assets are 23,920, its quick assets are 1490, uh, and its current liabilities are 12,270. Its asset test ratio equals what? So this one they actually just gave us the numbers. It's just a matter to know what the ratio is, and the ratio for the asset test ratio are going to take the uh, quick assets, which are the more restrictive assets, which don't include inventory. And that they say had quick assets of 14090. It's always going to be less than the current assets. And we're going to divide that by the current liabilities. Let's say current liabilities, which were 12270. So we then will take the 1490 quick assets over divided by 
12 to 70 current liabilities then we need to add some decimal miles so i'm going to go up to the home tab the numbers group and add decimals like so 1.15 again it might be a little bit longer but we're probably going to most problems will take it two places out like so Next one says that uh, corporation's quick assets are 1,111,000, its current assets are 13,260,000, and its current liabilities are 1,136,000. Its acid uh, ratio equals what? So same thing, we just got to know what the acid ratio is. So we're going to take the quick assets, it's going to include the quick assets which are less than the current assets, 6111. Zero, 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 and we're going to take the current liabilities, current liabilities, which are uh, quick assets, current assets, and its current liabilities, 8136000, zero, zero, zero. and we will then divide those out. So we're just going to take the quick assets divided by the current liabilities, and it's not, it's not one, it's going to be home tab, I'm going to the home tab, going to the numbers group, and we're going to add some decimals, and we get to 0.75. Now this one's interesting, of course, because we, we have the current liabilities are greater than the quick assets, meaning we can't pay off the current liabilities with our quick assets. It's, it's less than that. Also note that if we're dealing with these big numbers and you're talking about ratios, of course, you can we can knock off these three zeros in a ratio if we wanted to do it a little bit faster. If we have a time constraint, it'd just be six, one, 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 knock off the three or divide by a thousand to both sides, you know, eight. So we have here, we've got the 8136, and if we divide that out, then we should come up with the 6111 divided by the 8136. Once again, adding the decimals, home tab, numbers group, adding decimals, and we get the 0.75 once again. Next one, company had, company had cash sales of 95,525, credit sales of 84,200, sales returns and allowances of 2,200, and sales discounts of 3,975. Net sales for the period would be what? So it's important here not to confuse net sales and net income. So net sales, remember, is basically the sales minus the contra sales accounts, kind of, which includes sales returns and allowances and discounts. So we're gonna, if we were to calculate this, then we could take the sales amount and they gave us two sales numbers so we can subcategorize that and say we had cash sales, which is part of sales of 95,525 and we had the uh, credit sales, credit sales of, that's the 84,200, that gives us total sales and so sales is the sum of the cash plus the credit sales. So that's our sales amount. Now we have the sales returns and allowance. Returns and allowance, I'm just gonna abbreviate like so. That's gonna uh, reduce sales. So that, I'm gonna put that in as a negative in this case. Reducing the sales to 200 and the sales discount. Sales discount, that's gonna be a, the discounts we gave to our customers, negative 3975 and that gives us net sales not net income net sales i'm going to go ahead and sum these up and as we do sum that equals sum it's this number minus this number minus this number because those are in there as negatives if we were to put it into a calculator giving us the 173,550. now note that these these uh amounts here are contra sales accounts they basically act like expenses in that they're going to reduce the net income as well as the net sales and at the end of the day but they're basically kind of contra sales and they're up in the sales area. Next one says that a company's net sales were 716900 its cost of goods sold was $243.30 and its net income was 55900 Its gross margin ratio is what? Okay, so to do that we have to figure out first the gross margin. The gross margin will be the sales minus the cost of goods sold. So our most important relationship generally if we sell stuff inventory so we're gonna take the sales number which they gave us to be seven one six nine zero zero we're gonna take the cost of goods sold number which they gave us to be two four three oh three zero that subtraction problem will give us the gross profit that's the gross profit and we'll subtract those out that's going to be the sales 7169 minus the cost of goods sold 24330 
that gives us the gross profit. I'm going to underline that. Home tab, font group, underline. Now to figure out the profit, uh, the, the gross profit margin, we're going to take the gross profit divided by the sales. So that's, I'm usually put that next to the gross profit. And I'm going to say that equals the gross profit divided by the sales. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the home tab. We're going to go to the uh, numbers group and add decimals on that like so. And we could also, it's often in the form of a percentage. If we move the decimal two places to the right, we would then get a percentage. And if we want one more decimal, depending on, on how it would be formatted, 66.1 or, you know, as many as we want, we only need one apparently. And there we have it. So basically for every sales that we make, we're, we're kind of going away with every dollar, we're going away with 66 cents basically. Uh, that's gonna be the gross profit ratio.